Hello and welcome to the final video of the year for me. It's part three for the video about how I do prints for limited edition and also for exhibition. And today we're going to do two things basically looking at the proof prints which I received from Whitewall, comparing them to the originals and then also to make this a bit more interesting I also show you how I designed the certificates and in this part I show you how you can use smart objects in Photoshop. So even if you're not interested in printing or certificates, this part on smart objects could be interesting for you. But let's start with the proof prints I did. So here's the photo you know by now. It's the photo I uh, soft proofed in the last video. And you see this is just a small version uh, 20 by 30 and it has a little watermark embedded. Not sure if you see it in the video but this made it a little cheaper to order so it's really just a proof print and at this size it still cost me five euros to do this and I had to do 20 so I have 20 images for the exhibition so it's quite an investment but still I do this once and afterwards for every print I do for the limited edition also for the exhibition I can be sure that it will look exactly how I want. So if you're just doing one or two and want to risk it with just going with your soft proof, I think it's okay. Um, if you have some experience, you know what works, but with this one, I just wanted to be on the safe side. And also the final prints, which are 60 by 40, they cost me 25 euros. And then I have two images, which go by 90 uh, by 60 centimeters, and those cost over 50 euros. So it's really a good idea to just create a smaller version which you use just for proofing and looking at the colors. So this is what I did. I have this proof now and here in Lightroom I now brought up the original. So not the soft proofed version but the master file which I started with. And this is basically what I wanted to recreate with all the soft proofing and everything. The final print should look like this one and yeah. I can just now compare those files and here it's important again to work in a controlled environment. I mean by that again you have a well lit room and a constant lighting. So now I have the window open to be better able to film here and that's usually not a good idea for, for the comparisons I do because light from the outside it changes throughout the day so in the morning it's darker around noon it gets brighter in this room then the afternoon it gets darker again so i can't control how lit this room is if i just use the light from the outside so normally i just close the shade of the window and use the light above here this daylight lamp which i also use doing soft proofing and this will be the light which i use to compare so i hold up the image um, look at it compare it and then also go through all the other images and if i'm satisfied I can then order the final prints. Um, one thing what I wanted to show you, another image from the limited edition is this one. And this one actually was very hard to get right because it's such a dark image, which normally looks good on the PC, on the monitor, but in print it's hard to get right. So this is the third version here. I always had to go a little brighter um, work on the contrasts a bit and I want the final print to still look like night but also show enough details and yeah the final version will still be a little brighter but yeah I'm nearly there so if we compare it let's move over so that's the original and set, uh, that's here the print so they're now very similar and yeah, and 60 by 40, if it's a little bigger, I think it will look fantastic. And yeah, what else I can do? This is just for the colors because it's a smaller version. So the 60 by 40 prints are a little bigger. So if I want to check how the sharpness looks, I can do some test prints on my very cheap printer here at home. And I don't even use photo paper for that. Let me just show you. So. I just print on normal paper, oops, that was a little loud, and I use the 60 by 40 version, printed at 100% here, so the, the size it's printed, and it's just an 
excerpt of the big photo and I can even use this print although it looks horrible from the colors to check how the sharpness is in the print and yeah if I want to be very uh, a little um, do a better work I could use photo paper for that but still um, here I just want to go cheap and quickly check if it's all right and with my 5DSR files I also know that 60 by 40 print is, is not a big deal so the photos will just look sharp okay so now I made sure that everything will look good in the final print I order those and I already ordered the first set now to the second part of the tutorial I now go to Photoshop and show you a bit of the um, work I did there for the certificate so let's have a look so here you see the design of one of the certificates I did for the limited edition and it shows one of the photos I've taken in Angkor Wat a few years ago so up here at the top it's a German version so it says certificate of authenticity then I have the artist which is me the title of the image the date it was taken the place it was taken down here is the edition so I'll do a maximum of 25 prints at this size here 60 by 40 here I'll later insert um, the number and here's the material so this image or the limited edition the run will be 25 for 60 by 40 then I have a small version which is gonna be 30 by 20 also 25 and I also have a large version which is 90 by 60 also 25 so in total this image will be printed at a maximum 75 times and it will be printed on this Hahnemühle Fine Art Pearl if somebody wants it on a different paper that will be possible for example I'm thinking about doing the large version the 90 by 60 having it also as acrylic print so a fine art print behind acrylic glass but this will not be a separate edition so it will still be 25 for that size so this kind of limits the number of prints this photo will be done down here I have a little disclaimer talking about that this original print by me blah 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 and here on the side I have the image in a small version and a little story behind the image I'll print this on the same paper as the original print at 24 by 16 centimeters so it will be also high quality and once I printed it and also the the print which before it goes to the customer I'll put a date here and sign it and I do the same on the back side of the print and I also put the edition number here and also on the print and this way both match and basically make this uh, a unique print but now I wanted to show you how I use smart objects to design this so you see if I bring up the helper layers I did some design here ordering all the elements and here you see the image and also I'm not sure if you can see it I have a duplicate of this image in the background so let's just bring up the fill here so you see it's basically the same image which I have at full size in the background just in black and white and at a reduced opacity which makes this certificate uh, give it, gives it even a more high quality look from here if I want to do another certificate basically change the image I can use the smart objects and if I go to this photo horizontal you see down here this little sign this tells me that this is a smart object and I can just double click and now it opens the smart object as a separate file here now you see it in full size now if I want to change the image I just go and select one of my other images which I want to do a certificate for now so now if I just save this smart object Control S what this does it updates the image also here in the main file and not only that it also updates the background so let's bring up the opacity again so you see now both images were exchanged and yeah that's one part of what smart objects allow you to do so you have this original smart object and if you right click on it 
you can basically duplicate it. And this is what I did. I duplicated it, then I resized it to fill basically the complete background of this certificate. I put a clipping gradient mask or yeah, gradient map on it, which makes it black and white. So let's see the original. So it's just the same image. Then with this gradient map, it's black and white. And then I reduce the opacity. And yeah, the beauty now with those smart objects is I can just go in here, hide this again, save it again. And I'm back at the original where I started. So this is one thing you can do with smart objects and this can yeah, make your workflow a little easier if you design something else than working on a simple photo. Another thing is this original here is 3600 uh, 3, pixels wide and yeah, I can now resize it. And if you're not using smart objects, if you resize a photo, make it smaller, this is basically a destructive workflow. If I later wanted to make it bigger again, especially during the design of the certificate, I might decide, okay, I want this photo a little bigger, then I wouldn't be able to do this without yeah, um, interpolating the pixels. But if I'm working on a smart object, as long as I'm keeping it smaller than the original file here, I'll always be good. There will be no magnification done to the image. I always do the resizing based on the original. And yeah, that's very nice with smart objects. Another thing which I could do if I wanted, and which is also what smart objects are used for, I'm not doing this here, but I could now go and add a filter here. For example, I could add a Gaussian blur on that. So let's just make this a Gaussian blur looks horrible but it's just for demonstration and you see this is now a smart filter even with a mask so I could even mask out parts of this filter if I wanted that but also you might want to see this the background so the duplicate there's no filter on it so I have this image twice here as a smart object once it's made black and white the other one, I added a filter on it, can remove the filter again. So you're very flexible and it's non-destructive workflow. And yeah, just in the end, when this certificate is done, I would just flatten everything, convert it again to sRGB, 8 bits, and then save it as TIFF, same as the original prints. Yeah, and that's basically how I designed my certificate. And I still have a few more to do, so basically, changing the images and the smart object, then changing the information here, also down here. And yeah, then I'm done with the certificates and can also order them. So I hope this was interesting. If so, again, don't forget, leave a thumbs up and yeah, see you next year. Not sure if I continue with this series for now. Uh, I might wait till the exhibition. Next video, I think I'm gonna do a normal vlog again or some other post-processing tutorial. So stay tuned for that. Bye.